Now we are going to focus on the advantages of microorganisms. So, like they cause many diseases, so on the other side they have the other nature that they are widely used in different industries. So, one they are used in food industries. So, where they are used, they are basically used in a process of fermentation. What is fermentation? Fermentation is a process in which a complex substance breaks up into simple and how it breaks due to enzymes and who secrete these enzymes? The microorganisms. So, they are mainly used in the fermentation process in which the complex substance break up into simple by the action of enzymes released by the microorganisms. For example, the yeast, you know that yeast is actually used in baking bread, it is used in making bread. So, when we make a dough of, of bread, so we add uh, yeast to it. So, what happened yeast on uh, like yeast uh, releases the CO2 and the CO2 uh, which is there uh, get trapped in the dough, but when we just process it, then CO2 just uh, you can say escape out creating the holes and they make the it make the cake fluffy and uh, you can say spongy uh, this thing the bread fluffy and spongy just creating the holes. And those holes actually indicate that from these holes the carbon dioxide has been escaped. So, they are used, yeast is used in the fermentation and you know that fermentation is a process which is also used in the breweries for the production of hard drinks that is the wine because they contain uh, the component that is the ethanol. So, fermentation is a process which is used in breweries in forming the ethanol which is the constituent, major constituent of the wines or the hard drinks. So, there also what actually do we add yeast, yeast secretes certain enzymes and those enzy enzymes actually convert the uh, sucrose into an ethanol because in, uh, in the breweries we get ethanol from the sugarcane juice and sugarcane juice mainly contain the sucrose. So, there also the fermentation process is carried out and there also we are using a microorganism that is yeast and and yeast is actually secreting the enzymes that is actually carrying out the fermentation process. Second we have in the food industries you commonly you are familiar with the lactobacillus. See uh, lactobacillus is a bacteria which actually can convert the uh, milk into curd. It can actually change milk into curd. So, what uh, when you like uh, suppose uh, like if you want to have a curd from milk, so what you do actually you take milk and you just uh, heat uh, heat a little bit and then you add a spoon of uh, curd to it and you just uh, stir it and you just keep it uh, you just uh, close the lid and keep it aside in a warm condition. So, what happened this lactobacillus bacteria actually see the milk has actually the uh, lactose sugar. So, what does this bacteria do this converts the lactose sugar into the uh, lactic acid. So, we get a curd from the milk. Likewise, we can by the use of lactobacillus and streptococcus, we can have actually, uh, we can actually make paneer and cheese also. And there are certain, uh, you can say the uh, algae, uh, so this thing the fucus and the kelp, what does they do actually? These fucus and kelp, they are actually used as a thickening agent in ice creams, in making of ice creams and jellies. So, they are used in the as a thickening, age, thickening agent in the ice cream jelly, ice creams or jellies. Likewise, we have spirulina and chlorella. These are actually, uh, they are used in uh, making the SCPs that is single cell proteins. They are actually spirulina and cholera, they look like this and they are actually in making the SCPs. What is SCP? It is single cell proteins. And where this is it, you, it is used, it is actually a component of dietary supplements. They are actually the complement of dietary supplements, they provide extra proteins actually. So, they are the uh, you can say constituent of the supplements which dietary supplements which you take in like you take proteins, you take amino acids. So, they are actually the component of those things. So, that means they are actually serving a major use in the food industries because I have summed up few, but actually there are a lot more where the microorganism is just helping. The second is the medicinal use in the medicinal industries. So, in medicinal industries as you all are familiar with the antibiotic and you know that antibiotic is something which you uh, take in order to prevent the, uh, in order to uh, this thing, uh, uh, in order to retard the growth of the microorganisms in your body or you can say that uh, which uh, antibiotic are the chemicals which you take outside and they are going to fight with the pathogens which have entered your body and they are just uh, harming your body in any way. 
So first antibiotic which was uh, synthesized was penicillin and you know that it was synthesized from the fungi again a microorganism named penicillium. So penicillium uh, fungi uh, was the first uh, produced the first vaccine that is the penicillin and uh, so likewise we can actually form many antibiotics. So like streptomycin is uh, produced from streptomyces, tetracycline, erythromycin we get from another bacteria. So that means there are certain bacteria which uh, bacteria or microorganism in general which can actually produce the antibiotics and you know that we actually need the antibiotics if we want to get rid of the diseases. Next we have is the vaccine. Now <clears throat> the question is that what, you, what do you mean by vaccine? You must have seen that whenever uh, there is a newly, newly born child so that uh, you just uh, take to a doctor and ask for the vaccination. You say that uh, and what does the doctor in return do? They just put a vaccine for the tetanus, a booster dose or a DPT or uh, these kind of many kind of uh, polio vaccine, many kind of vaccines. So what is actually that vaccine and why it is meant for? Like what is the use? Uh, the vaccine is solving. See, the, when the child is born, he, uh, the child is actually, uh, you can say, prone to many disease because it doesn't have any uh, this thing, the immunity in the body, immunity of the born child is, newly born child is very low. So we are just trying to create the immunity in the body of the child. How? By, uh, by vaccination, right. So what we are doing in vaccination actually? In the vaccination, we are introducing either the dead or the weakened microorganism into the child's body. So when we introduce the dead or the weakened microorganism into a child's body, it led to the uh, production of antibodies in the body of the newly born child. This is the, uh, you can say, the self mechanism of any body that whenever any foreign particle enters in your body, that particle is regarded as a foreign particle and in response your body tries to uh, make, uh, you can say, uh, is trying to um, protect itself, how? By synthesizing antibodies within the body. And those antibodies actually are capable of uh, making that uh, the, the foreign particle harmless. So what happened when a newly born baby is there, so he is uh, having a low immunity. That means he is not having a sufficient antibodies in its body. So what we do, we just introduce a dead or a weakened microorganism in the body. So that dead or weakened microorganism which we are injecting is not going to harm the body. But it is regarding as a, regarded as a foreign particle, right? So when that, uh, part, uh, when that uh, foreign substance is introduced, the body regards it as a foreign particle and tries to cover itself. How? By synthesizing the antibodies. So those antibodies are actually made in the uh, that newly born child and they get rest uh, they, or you can say they just they are just prepared and they are in a form a resting form in the body. So whenever uh, during its lifespan he is going to encounter any kind of infection so that means he don't have to waste time for the production of so and so antibodies because he already has those antibodies prepared in its body's body and those antibodies can actually fight with those uh, foreign particles. So this is what uh, we can say that we are providing the immunity to the child. So this is why the vaccination is very important. So what is vaccination? It is inoculation of or uh, inoculating a dead or a weakened microorganism in the uh, body of the child in order to stimulate the antibody production so that he can actually uh, make a certain kind of immunity of the body and can resist too many diseases. So that means there also we are using the microorganism because I told you that in vaccination we are inoculating the dead or the weakened microorganism. So here it is serving as a medicinal use, a great medicinal use you have seen. Like in in both the cases we are just trying to save the lives. How? By uh, these antibiotic are the things that we, which are going to fight against the pathogens and vaccines uh, they are just going to provide the immunity by uh, stimulating the production of the antibodies. Don't forget antibodies are synthesized within antibiotic which you eat from outside in order to uh, fight against the infections. Third it has an agricultural use also. You must have uh, come across mycorrhiza. What is mycorrhiza? It is the association of fungus, symbiotic association I must say. Symbiotic you know that in which both the partners are mutually benefited. So symbiotic association of fungus with roots of higher plants, with roots of higher plants. So fungus is going to help the plants to absorb water and minerals and in return plant is going to provide food to the fungus. So here also the fungus is actually uh, serving as an important use because here also it is acting as a micro, it is a microorganism. 
Second, we have leguminous plants. Leguminous plants have special bacteria in their root nodules, that is the rhizobium bacteria. Now, again, this is a symbiotic relationship. Plant is going to provide food to the rhizobium and in return, rhizobium bacteria is actually capable of converting the atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogen, nitrogen compounds. So, it is going to provide nitrogen compounds to the plants. So, again, a symbiotic relationship. Fourth use, the microorganism that, uh, that show is a degradation. Degradation is actually a uh, process of uh, converting a complex substance into a simple by the action of microorganism. This is also again very important. See, we have so many nutrients, so we need to maintain the con nutrient content in the nutrient pool. So, like if so when somebody dies or whenever we have a organic matter, dead or decaying organic matter, we have to extract nutrients from it. Because if we'll extract the nutrients, they may enter the soil oil, water, air and then again come into a cycle. So, for that we need to uh, degrade that and how we degrade that? We degrade by the use of uh, microorganisms, not we actually do, microorganisms themselves grow on those dead and decaying matter and they just start degradation, decomposing and they um, extract the nutrients and again add the nutrients into nutrient pool and then they are recycled again in the biogeochemical cycle. So, that means these are the, uh, you can say that they are actually serving a very important use. They have been used in food industries, they are helpful in making many products. They are used in the medicinal industries, they are saving lives. They are used in the agricultural industries, again agriculture you know that we are directly or indirectly dependent on agriculture and they are actually uh, functioning in the degradation process also. Here also they are just trying to recycle the nutrients. So, that means it, it is also very important in order to you can say maintain the nutrient content in the nutrient pool. So, this is what is the advantages of the microorganisms.